Praise the Lord. I want to take this opportunity to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God has been good. His nature is good. God has not abandoned his people. He has not forgotten about you. He is still in love with you. He will never forgive, he will never forget you, rather. He will never abandon you. The Bible says that even the very hair on your head are numbered. God knows you in particular. Thank you for being strong in the Lord and thank you for confessing Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Thank you for loving him so dearly and seeking to please him. Thank you for walking in his ways. Thank you for bearing his cross even in these tough moments. You know, the days we are living in are getting tougher and tougher every day. Laws are getting tighter and tighter every day. But they that know their God, they that know their God, shall be strong and do exploits. You are not abandoned. You are not forsaken. You are not left alone. God has not forgotten about you. If he, has, he, if he had abandoned you, you would have been gathered with the dead. But you are still awake. You are still alive. You are still moving. And the reason you are doing that is because God is with you and he still loves you. So I say, praise the Lord. When I was still young, I was taught by my mother that it is, it is a good thing to say thank you in everything. So I want to thank you for choosing Pastor Emmanuel Binaisa from Right Years of God International Ministries to bring to you the word of God as it is. You know, God called me to speak the word. I am a minister of the word of God. The word of God is power. The word of God is principle. The word of God produces miracles. So I'm delighted that you've given me such another opportunity to be with me in this moment and share with you the word of God. So my brothers and sisters, my friends from all over the world, bear with me. There is something I want to share with you today. It is so much on my heart. And I believe if I shared it with you, we are going to share in this same burden. And I believe as we share, we shall lift this in the presence of God. I am not going to share this in, in a critic of any religion, in a critic of any individual, but I want to call forth the army of God. I want to Ask the army of God, the time has come to, to shake off your dust. Understand, for the days we are living in are evil compared to the days we first believed. But as we nearing to the coming back of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is about to demonstrate his mighty and his power like never before. And I am praying to God that you and I will be the instruments to bring about this revival in the name of Jesus. This time I want to share with you about unity. I am praying the Lord in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that you anoint me. Anoint me, anoint my lips of clay as they proclaim your oracles. May your right nail be pierced and be revealed. Touch your people where they need to be touched. For you sent your word and your word healed them. So Lord, use me as the instrument to bring about revival, to bring about a change, to bring about healing to everybody that needs healing right now. In Jesus' name. And the people say, Amen and Amen. Today I want to share with you a message I've entitled, The Unity 
or the power of unity. The power of unity. And what happens when people are united? What happens when the church is united? And what happens when the family is united? What happens when people come together and they are united? The Bible declares in the book of Amos that two cannot walk together unless they agree. In order for the church of Jesus to defeat the world, in order the church of Jesus to defeat the devil, the principle number one, we must be united. We must be united. The time has come for the church of Jesus to come together and bring down every principality and bring down every powers of darkness and bring down every demonic spirit and bring down every binary, bi binding spirit. The church of Jesus has to come together and be united. The church of Jesus has to come together and speak one language. The church of Jesus has come, has, must come together and pray like never before. You know, a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. A prayerless Christian is like a devil's punch bag. When you cease praying, you lose your stand as a child of God. As you very well understand, that our battles are not carnal. They are not uh, physical battles. We war against principalities. We war against powers of darkness. We war against demonism and satanism. We war against every witchcraft. We war against every weakness. We war against every method and methodologies of men. We war against every ideas of men uh, to bring down every binding spirit. And we cannot do that unless the church stands as the body of Christ. I want to share with you from the book of Genesis. Chapter, chapter 11 and verse, from verse 4 to verse 8. I want you to get me right clear. The Bible says... Uh, uh, let us start from verse 11, that we may be able to, I mean, verse 1, chapter 11, that we may be able to understand it clear. Uh, it says, chapter 11 of Genesis, from verse 1, Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. Get this clear? The whole earth had one language oh my god they had one speech and it came to pass as they journeyed from east and they found a plain in the land of china and they dwelt there verse 3 and they said one to another come let us make bricks and bake them theologically they had for stone and they had uh, ashlot so for mortar and they said let us build ourselves a city mark this properly let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heaven let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad for for abroad over the face of the whole earth for the lord came down but the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built and the Lord said, listen to this, get this right in your spirit. And the Lord said, indeed the people are one. And they are, all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Number seven, come let us go down and confuse them and confuse their language that 
they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered. So the Lord, sorry, the Lord, the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth. And they ceased building the city. Therefore, the name is called Balbel. Listen to me, my friend. In the book of Acts, in the book of Acts chapter 2, the Bible declares, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all, listen to this, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly came a sound from heaven as of a rushing and mighty wind, and it filled the whole house. There they were sitting. Then they appeared as they appeared to them divided tongues, tongues, tongues as of fire. One sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. Now get this right in your spirit. I want to speak to you about the power of unity. Your Bible declares in the book of Genesis chapter 1 that the people, all the people of the earth were speaking one language. That means they were united. The whole people of the whole earth had one language. They had one speech. Get this in your spirit. All the people of the earth were having one speech and having one language. That is a sign of unity. Actually, one language speaks of unity. When people are united, they speak one language. Even if one speaks English, another one speaks Luganda, another one speaks Lunyankole, but as long as they agree, it means they are speaking one language. Speak Luganda, but they mean the same thing. Another one speaks Lunyankole, meaning the same thing. All the people of the earth were having one speech and they were speaking one language and listen to me get this in your spirit your bible says they proposed i said hey let us do something let us come together and make bricks and build a tower let us break and make bricks build a tower for ourselves which ascends up to God, that we may make a name for ourselves. Now get to this. These people, these people were doing a good thing. They wanted to build a tower ascending up to heaven. But the problem is they had a wrong motive. They were doing something good, but with a wrong motive. They were building a tower. They wanted to see where God is. They wanted to reach the throne of God. They want to reach the heavens. They wanted to get to where man is, to where God is. And they said, we want to get to the heavens. They knew there is heavens above man. And they said, let us build a tower. We want to see where God sits. And they, the Bible declares, they agreed, let us do it. And they started doing it. They were doing a good job. They were doing a noble work. But they had a problem within themselves. They had a queer motive. They had a wrong motive. They were making a tower. The Bible says that we may make a name for ourselves. My friends, listen to me and listen to me good. God did not call you to make a name for yourself. The reason why everybody is divided today. Everybody wants to make a name for them. Themselves. God did not call us for denominations. God did not call us for groups. God did not call us to make non-government organizations. God did not call us to build towers, to make names after us or after our children or after our father or after our children or after our, 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 our tribe. God never called us for that. Otherwise, God called us to turn the city the right thing up. And if you are a child of God, 
God did not call you to make a name for you. He called you to make a name for him. He called you to establish his kingdom, not your own kingdom. And the people said, let us gather together. Let us make a name for ourselves. Lest we be, lest we be forgotten from the face of the earth. You know, some people today are preaching to make names for themselves. Some people today are doing whatever they are doing to make a name for themselves. But the time has come for people to stop making a name for themselves and start making a name for the kingdom of God. When you build the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God will build you. When you desire to make a name for God, God will desire to make a name for you. It takes God one day to turn a nobody into somebody. It may take God one day to, to turn a poor man into a rich man. It may take God one day to turn a sick man into a healthy man. It may take God one day to turn a corpse into a living person. It takes God one day to turn a bachelor into a married couple. It takes God one day to turn your situation around so when you desire to make a name for the Lord God can make a name for you and when God decides to make you popular not even a devil can hinder you not even a not even a demon can hinder you not even a witch can hinder you when God decides to make you popular all things will become possible so this man said let us build a tower going up to God, that we may make a name for ourselves. Now listen to me and watch this. God watched man from above. And he said, if these men are one, if these people are one, and they are speaking one language, nothing they will propose to do and fail. Anything they will want to do, they will accomplish it. If they are speaking one language. Now listen to me, my friends. Listen to me, church. If we are speaking one language, no government will stand us. If we are speaking one language, no kingdom will stand us. Not even God in heaven. God was threatened by the unit of men. And he said, if these men are one, the problem of the church today, everybody is seeking his own, own, his own glory. God never called us to glorify ourselves. God called us to glorify him. The Bible declares no flesh will glory in the kingdom of God. No flesh, nobody will glory in the kingdom of God. God did not call you to build yourself a tower, to build yourself astrology house god did not call you to be to be, to drive for yourself a big car god called you to build a kingdom for him god called you to turn many souls to him god called you to change the world upside down god called you for a purpose and god said if these people want and they are speaking one language nothing they will propose to do and fail. Whatever they think, they are going to accomplish it. If they are talking of building a tower, they are going to finish it. They are going to reach their goal. When a family is united, when a church is united, nothing can stop them. I say, when a church of God is united, it will, it will oppose every devil. When the church is united, it will stop every binding spirit. When the church of God is united, we have the power over every situation. When the church is united, all leaders will want to come and hear what God says. When the church is united, Jesus said they will see the way you love one another. Not the way you speak about one another. Not the way you criticize one another. Not the way you, you, you demonize one another. But God, he said you, they will see the way you love one another and they will follow you to me. But nowadays, people are changing and they are starting to build their own kingdom. And God said, if you want to stop these people from building, don't just kill them. Killing them will not stop them all. Destroying them won't stop them. If you want these men to stop, just confuse their language. Take the element of unity from them. 
and they will be stopped. For example, in Uganda, where I'm preaching from, when we started preaching the gospel, our weapons were targeting the devil. We identified the problems that were in Uganda. It was witchcraft. It was religiosity. It was religion. And we identified it and we hit the nail on the head. And we were able to defeat witchcraft. And the devil departed. And the devil left the church. And when the devil had left the church, he went somewhere and said, Now, what am I going to do to bring down the church? Now that I'm cast out, now that I'm recognized, what am I going to do to get this church down? And this is what the devil did. Uh, the devil decided to make a U-turn. Now he did not come to fight the church. He just came to be member of the church. And he became part of the church. He entered some of the leaders. And now the devil is fellowshipping among the brethren. That's what the devil did. He said, let me go now and be part of them. Now you find a leader speaking against another leader. You find an anointed man of God who was called to preach the gospel. He is busy preaching about people. And you know what? Do you know what? Even the big men in the set house, they are wise. They are anointed to lead. And I thank God for the leadership. They call one by one. And I ask them, what do you say about opening the church? This one speaks another language. The language to build his kingdom. And when he calls another one, he speaks another language. When he calls another one, he speaks another language. And now the man, the big man, sits back confused. I say, now what am I going to do? This one says, we do this. Another one says, we do this. And he sees we have not one speech. But if we are speaking one language, if we are doing one speech, I am telling you, nothing could stop us. When we get unity back into the fellowship, we are going to defeat every binding spirit. We are going to defeat every devil. The church of Jesus, I am saying the church of Jesus is not a defending church. We are not on offensive anymore. We are on the defensive. And if we are to attack the devil, we must move together. If we are to attack the devil, we must pray together. If we are to attack the devil, we must, we must, we must, I repeat, we must must move together. If, if, if you want to know how fast you can run, don't run alone. Run together with somebody. You need to be with somebody. You need to agree and speak one language. But when you find this lead of this denomination called somewhere, they speak other things. They call the other one. They speak other things. The Bible says if these people are one, when God wanted to destroy people, when he wanted them to seize building, he confused their language. And everybody started speaking on his own. Everybody started misunderstanding the other. Now the work ceased. The church of Jesus is getting stagnant. The church of Jesus is being hindered from progressing. But that will not take long, my friend. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise, my enemy. In the book of Micah, chapter 7 and verse 7, the Bible declares, do not dare, don't dare rejoice over me. When I fall, I shall arise. A just man may fall seven times, and seven times is arising. God has given us a resilient spirit, a spirit that refuses to stay down. Every time we are knocked down, we keep on rising. Every time we are knocked down, we keep on rising. And I declare today, let the power of God unite us in the name of Jesus, the army of God. It is time for us to unite the army of God. It is time for us to speak one language. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. You may be a black, you may be white, you may... You may be Asian, you may be, you may be, you, you may be Asian, you're in between, you may be red, blue, purple, or in between, whoever, wherever you're coming from, as long as you belong to Christ, the Bible declares we must be united, and if we are one, 
and having one speech. Anything we plan, we will are going to see leaders from political parties coming to church and becoming ushers. You are about to see cabinet ministers coming to church and praying. You are about to see demons running like never before. You are about to see creepers walking. You are about to see blind eyes opening. You are about to see our parliament before they sit, they first make a prayer. You are about to see a change in our society when we get united. I say when you get united. And the Bible declares, God formed a strategy of stopping the tower. The devil is not foolish. He knows what the devil, what God did to stop the building of the tower. So the devil is using the same weapon to stop the church from progressing. But I want to let you know, devil, we know your schemes. We know your lies. You are not going to defeat us. We know you. And we realize what you are doing. And we are defeating you. We are casting you out of our fellowship. In the name of Jesus. Casting you out of our homes. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says when God confused their language. The work ceased. And it went on and on and on. Many, many years after. Jesus was born. Jesus died. And he rose again and he gathered his disciples and he said if you want to build the church you can't build it without getting restored that which was taken away from you in the beginning. If you want to build the church, the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verses 10 that, that you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall become my witnesses. And the Lord told them, do not leave Jerusalem until you receive the power from on high. And when the day, the, the day of Pentecost was fully come in chapter 2 of Acts, that the Pentecost was fully come. Your Bible declares they were all in one accord. All in one place. Oh my God. In Genesis chapter 11, the whole earth was one language and one speech. In Acts chapter 2, they were all in one place and in one accord. Nobody spoke against the other. The church was united. If we got to see the revival that we have never seen before, we must get the unity back into our church. We must get the unity back into our fellowship. We, you, we must break the spirits of religion. We must get back that unity. They were all in one place and in one accord. And this is what the Holy Spirit did. Oh my God. This is what the Holy Spirit did. Your Bible declares... Your Bible that you read says, and suddenly there appeared, there appeared upon them tongues like of fire, tongues, tongues like of fire. The tongues that were taken away from them were restored here when they were united, when they were in one place. What was taken away in Genesis chapter 11 was restored in Acts chapter 2. It was restored and your Bible declares they, the Holy Spirit filled them. They started speaking with the new tongues. Oh my God. The fire was in the form of tongues. What was taken away was restored. If we are to get back what God promised us we must get together we must not be in one place speaking different languages for example there are people gathering even the church leaders gathering they are gathering together but speaking different language that must stop gone are the days of gathering in flesh and we are not united in the spirit the time has come for us to gather in the flesh and be united to the spirit and they were all speaking one language. And suddenly they appeared upon them tongues like the tongues of fire.
Whatever. God first restored their tongues. He first restored their language. And they all started speaking other languages. Hallelujah. As the Spirit gave them utterances, they started understanding one another. The Jew and the Greek, they all spoke one language. Hallelujah. Whatever that was stolen, and on that very day, the, your Bible declares 5,000 men gave their life to Jesus without a microphone, without an amplifier, without a church building, without a radio station, without, without even these machines, without an online TV. Your Bible declares the whole city yielded to the Lord and 5,000 men turned their lives to Jesus. Why? Because something was that was stolen was brought back to the man. And the man received the Holy Spirit and started speaking with the new tongues. Their tongues was changed. They were all in one accord. Church of Jesus, I'm requesting you. I am begging you in the name of Jesus. I was so hurt one day when I witnessed one of the elders of our city. One of the elders of our city. It makes me cry. It makes me pray for him every day. It makes me pray and fast and I don't want to stop until something is done. One of the elders, the man I admired. I also admire him until now. The man I pray for. The man who witnessed the gospel to me, and I loved the style of his preaching. One of the elders of our city, standing before the president of the Republic of Uganda, when he had invited him for a crusade. The president was so kind, humble enough, he attended. And on his crusade, instead of preaching the gospel, and the gospel alone, you found him say, there are churches in Uganda which have mass graves. Many dead bodies are hidden in churches. Imagine before the president. It touched my heart. I said I wish, I wish God could come down and assess the situation. I wish God could come down because this is beyond human understanding. This is beyond human understanding. The church leaders, everybody speaking their own language. For which reason? They are trying to build their own kingdom, not God's kingdom. But the time has come for the church of Jesus to repent. The time has come for the church of Jesus to repent. The time has come. Jesus is coming back. I said Jesus is coming back. When Jesus comes back, he is going to turn every crooked place straight. When Jesus comes back, he is going to change every situation around. When Jesus comes back, everything that was taken away from you will return in the name of Jesus. When the time comes, the Bible declares, the time has come. The judgment will start from the house of God. And if it starts from the house of God, how shall it be to you that has neglected the gospel after Jesus has disciplined his own children? Do not laugh. When judgment is in the house of God, do not laugh. Some unbelievers are now laughing and say, hey, hey, something is happening to the church. The church leaders are being exposed and you are laughing. God is about to be through with his church. God is about to be through with his children. And if he has judged his children, what about you? That is still a stranger. If a father disciplines his own children, what about you, his workers? Now, my friend, I am praying today that you give your life to Jesus. Everybody watching me, that I want us to agree together. I want us to pray together. I want us to believe together. I want us to call upon Jesus today. I want to call upon heaven today. I am praying that may God restore the unit of the fellowship. 
I am praying that God, may you restore the unity of your children. May you restore the unity of your people. I say, may you restore the unity of all that follow you in the name of Jesus. May you restore your unity. Let the people be united. Let we be in one place. Help us and enable us to speak one language. Every spirit of disunity, every spirit of confusion, every spirit of malice, every spirit of backbiting, it is coming down now in the name of Jesus. I pray for the church to stand. I pray for the church all over the world. May it stand right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for our pastors, even those that are speaking words, they are giving out false information that they do not have evidence, they don't have evidence about. I pray, may God, may God forgive them. May God not judge them accordingly. But I pray, may God forgive them. I pray that God will bring everything to light. I pray that God will bring us together. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I am praying for them. Them. I am praying for them. I don't pray that they get arrested, but I pray that they come to repent in the name of Jesus because there is no body too big to repent, oh God. There is no body too big to repent because the Bible declares that when we repent of our sins, Lord, you are just and you are just Lord to forgive us and forget all our sins. I also pray today for our leaders in Jesus' name. Give them one heart, give them one spirit in the name of Jesus. And even those who profess Jesus and they're in the place of power, Lord, they were put in the kingdom for times like this to speak for the church, to speak for, for the life of those that are oppressed in the church. I pray for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. I pray that God will visit you. I pray that God will anoint you. I pray that God will take that pain away. I pray that God, I'm praying for you today. In the name of Jesus, let every grievous heart be restored it today. Let every broken heart be restored it today. I pray for you. Let your body be restored. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. When people and they are speaking one language, nothing they propose to do will not be done. When the church is together, when the church is united, we are going to defeat our foes. We are going to defeat our enemies. When the church is one, I pray that the church of Jesus from all over the world will start speaking one language. Let us speak one language. I pray for every pride to break. The Bible says pride cometh before the fall. I break every pride. Every pride in you, I command it to be broken. It's time to repent. It's time to come back to the Lord. How can a man of God speak about your brethren like that? I wish you brought a picture and showed everybody the mass graves. Because these people are saying, are having media stations. They are having journalists. They pay. But they give out half-baked information to confuse the congregation so that they may build a kingdom, they may build a name for themselves. God did not call us to build a name for ourselves so that the president will know us. No, he did not call us to be known by government officials. No. He called us to be known by the heavenly angels. They are the seven sons of Sceva. In the book of Acts, look at this. This man saw Apostle Paul casting out demons. And uh, they also went and found somebody who was oppressed and tormented and possessed by devils, evil spirits. And your Bible declares, they went into the house. They spoke to the demons. And they said, you demons, in the name of 
Jesus, whom Paul preaches, we command you to come out of this devil, demon possessed. And the young man that was possessed by demons turned to them and said, Hey, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. But who are you? We don't know you. Listen. And the demons told them, You know, Jesus did not call us to make a name for ourselves. He called us to make a name for him. When you submit to God, heavens will know you. Men may not know you. These seven sons of Scavia were sons of a high priest with a renowned name. Everybody knew them as sons of the high priest. Everybody in the city knew them. But demons did not know them. You may be known everywhere. You may be entering the state house freely. Everybody may know you in Uganda. You may be so popular on TV. You may be so popular everywhere. But the question is, does heaven know you? Does Jesus know you? Jesus, does he know you? And the demon chased them. They were the sons of Sceva, the high priest. But demons tore them. I am begging you, my sisters. I'm begging you, my brother, let us get united. Let us have one language. I pray that God will restore our language. God will restore our tongues. God will restore our way of understanding. God will restore our zeal that we may preach the gospel and the gospel alone. That we may preach Jesus and Jesus alone. That we may preach Christ. We are called to preach Christ and Christ alone. Praise the Lord. Jesus did not call you to confound to the standards of this world. But he called you to preach Jesus. He called you to preach Jesus. The answer to the world today is not World Food Organization. It is not World Health Organization. The answer to the world today is Jesus. You know where I come from. I, I like my country so much. I like Uganda. I like Uganda. I love Uganda with all my heart. It's a small country. And our scientists actually were despised before and less paid per se. But do you know that nobody has died from this pandemic of COVID-19 in Uganda. And recently when they were charging patients uh, who recovered from COVID-19, the doctors went outside and their patients and they started praising God. They knew it very well that there is no medicine from World Health Organization. And it is said that no medicine yet, but God is able to heal. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand me. The solution to the world today is Jesus. You may try to keep him away from the fellowship. You may try to exalt scientists above Christ. You may try to exalt a medicine above God. And you are trying to protect his people your way. My God, you are trying to protect God's people your way. I want to let you know, you cannot succeed. You are trying to protect methods over faith. You are trying to develop your own way of saving mankind. Let me, let me say this as a man of God. God has anointed me. If I never saw Jesus... Face to face, when he called me to preach, I will not be as bold as I'm speaking to you. But I saw him. Now I've seen him thrice in my life. And if I'm speaking, I know the heart of God. I know what he values most. Now my friend, my friend, let Jesus be worshipped his way. May the Lord bless you. My name is Pastor Emmanuel Bin Isa. From right here, of God International Ministries, together with my wife, Pastor, Prophetess, 
Marion, Brenda Binaisa, my brother uh, Jonah Isaac, behind the camera, may God be with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.